are you, darling? It's gone. It comes and it goes. Oh, how annoying. Believe me, it's of no importance. And yet it makes you so nervous. I can only tell you what the doctor said, to forget it and not to worry. Well, I'd worry. Dr. Bengard. I repeat it, Dr. Bengard is the man for you. Don't let's go into that again. I will not be psychoanalyzed. Oh, now, Jill, that's a very middle-class attitude. I'm a perfectly normal woman. Well, that sounds awfully dull. My dear, you mustn't say that about yourself. Not even in fun. Seriously, Jill, go to Dr. Bengard. He certainly did wonders for Molly McLean. Do you know she was suffering so from claustrophobia she couldn't ride in an elevator? Can you imagine what that means to a woman living in a penthouse? And Dr. Van Gogh cured her? Well, he must have. I read the other day in Winchell's column she ran away with an elevator boy. Oh, Molly McLean? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. My name is Mrs. Baker. I know. Mrs. Stallings phoned me. Will you please be seated? Mrs. Baker. Your first name? Jill. Jill Baker. 685 Park Avenue. 685 Park Avenue. Your age, Mrs. Baker? 22. I'm your doctor, Mrs. Baker. 24. Thank you. Doctor, I want to be frank with you. I'm absolutely certain there's nothing really wrong with me. I'm sure you'll feel differently when you leave this office. You see, most people know nothing about themselves. Nothing. Their own real personality is a complete stranger to them. Now, what I'm trying to do is to introduce you to your inner self. I want you to get acquainted with yourself. Wouldn't you like to meet you? No. You see, I'm a little shy. All right. What well, seems to be the trouble? Well... It's difficult to show you the symptoms at the moment because it comes and it goes. Oh, it comes and it goes. Yes, it's so unfortunate. It's always the same whenever I see a doctor. When, when I come, it goes. And when I go, it comes. Mrs. Baker, whatever comes and whatever goes, there's no denying it worries you a lot. So please drop all your inhibitions, release your inner self, and speak freely. What comes and what goes? Hiccups. Hiccups? Yes. Whenever I get nervous or irritated, I get the hiccups. It's rather unpleasant and sometimes very uncomfortable. Well, naturally, it's a little early to make any diagnosis. But you're apparently getting these hiccups because of a nervous condition. Let's find out what causes that condition. Sounds plausible. Thank you. Would you mind stepping to the next room? Uh-huh. Well, there's nothing unusual in your childhood. Let us examine your present life. Let us look at it through a magnifying glass. Let us examine every detail. Mrs. Baker, you're married, aren't you? Yes. When did you get married? When I was 19. How long have you been married? For six years. To the same husband? Yes. Uh-huh. Doctor, please believe me, there's nothing wrong with my marriage. You could go through all Park Avenue and you wouldn't find a happier couple. Well, I'm sorry, but it's my duty to explore every avenue, especially Park Avenue. How old is your husband? Thirty-five. His business? He's vice president of an insurance company. But will you please leave my marriage alone? Oh, well, very well. Just relax. We'll talk about something entirely different. Do you suffer from headaches? No. How is your appetite? Good. How do you sleep? Frankly, not so well. How does your husband sleep? Very well. Uh-huh. <laughs> now, during one of these sleepless nights, when you wriggle around restlessly, and you look to your right, what do you see? My dressing table. And when you look to your left, what do you see? My husband. Sleeping? Yes. Uh-huh. What are you trying to do? Break up my marriage? No. Just wake up your husband. Well, thank you. That'll be all for today. Doctor, my husband has nothing to do with my sleeplessness. It's just that I'm super sensitive to noises or to the slightest sound. Does your husband snore? No. But I must admit he breathes rather heavily. Oh, he does. I don't think there's anything I can do about it. After all, he has to breathe. I suppose so. Well, Mrs. Baker, I'm afraid your husband's ability to sleep is too big a challenge for you. It's rather like, uh, well, have you ever been on a diet? Yes, a vegetable diet. Well, how would you feel if you had to struggle with a few raw carrots and have someone next to you eat a big juicy steak? With a large baked potato? Yes. My husband, two weeks ago. Well, didn't it make you nervous? No. But now that you mention it, now that I think of it, it is rather irritating. And not very considerate. No, it isn't. 
After all, husbands expect their wives to keep their figures, but on the other I hand... I would call it a complete lack of cooperation. It is. Uh-huh. <coughs> Jill, dear. Hello, Margie. Oh, why, haven't I heard from you? How are you, dear? All right. Anything wrong? Oh, Margie, you shouldn't have sent me to that Dr. Van Gogh. Did you go back to him? No, and I won't. He's not going to break up my marriage. There's nothing wrong between Larry and me. That's what I say. Are people talking about us? They wouldn't dare in my presence. They know you and I are close friends, and I always defend you. I know, dear. Defend me against what? Well, now, after all, town and country called you the Happy Bakers. That's kind of sticking out your chin. Well, how many of our friends have stayed married for six years? Why shouldn't they call us the Happy Bakers? Well, why not? Your name is Baker, isn't it? Oh, oh Margie. I've been perfectly miserable for the last two weeks. I'm so marriage conscious. Whatever I look at, whatever I think of, I always find myself connecting it with my marriage. How oh, I hate that Vanguard. And yet, if I'm honest, I must admit... What, dear? Well, if a wife looks at her husband through a magnifying glass, she's bound to see something. Yes, I should think so. Things I was never aware of before. Things I never noticed. For instance? Well, it's just an illustration, but like the other morning. You know how difficult it is for me to fall asleep. Well, finally, when I'm lucky enough to drop off, promptly at 8.15, what do I wake up to? A gargle. A gargle? Mm -hmm. That's the bugle call of marriage. Gargle is reveille, snore is taps. And what is there between? At 9 o'clock in the morning, he goes out of my life. Oh, my dear, isn't it the truth? Oh, I don't know what's the truth anymore. I'm completely confused. I'm so uncertain. I've always heard that the ideal marriage should be something of a mystery. That your husband should remain a kind of stranger to you. Someone whose acquaintance you'd like to renew every day. You know what I mean. Yes, dear. Don't say anything. Hello, Margie. Hello, Larry. Hello, darling. Hello. How are you? Fine, and you? Okay. Have a good day? Yes, and you? Good. Anything new? No, with you? Nothing. Good. I'll see you later. Well, what could he say? Why, of course, dear, there was nothing new, and he frankly admitted it. Jill. Yes, darling? Are the Coopers coming to dinner? I don't know yet, darling. I'll let you know as soon as they phone. I wish you would, because if they're coming, I'll have to shave. All right, darling. I... Now, I don't want to cause any trouble. But cold facts are cold facts. If Mr. and Mrs. Cooper come, that big, awful-looking Mrs. Cooper, he shaves. And if he has dinner alone with his wife, he doesn't shave. And if anybody should shave, it's Mrs. Cooper. I spent three and a half hours today at Elizabeth Arden's, but I don't rate a shave. My dear, that's the trouble with 95% of all marriages. Husbands don't shave. Don't men realize that a beard doesn't stop growing at 8 o'clock? <coughs> Larry. Yes, dear. They're back. Fine, they have a good trip. Who? The Evans. Say, that reminds me, that son of a gun promised to call me as soon as he got back. I'll bet Colin Nettles after him about his annuity. The Evans are still in Bermuda. The hiccups are back. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the joke's on me, huh? <laughs> yeah, that was very cute. <laughs> Kicks! Larry, hmm? when you came in just now, you asked me if there was anything new. Oh, say, there is something new. And something very important, too. You know who's coming to dinner a week from Thursday? The president of Universal Mattress and the president and secretary treasurer of United Furniture and some other high executives of both companies. Oh, good grief. Uh, oh, I know it's going to be one of those nights, but Universal Mattress and United Furniture have merged. They're reshuffling their entire insurance account. Now, the tough man to crack is Kafka of Universal Mattress. <laughs> I've done a little detective work. He's a Hungarian. As a matter of fact, they're all Hungarian. So, so let's give the dinner a kind of Hungarian touch, huh? Now, look, Larry. Oh, now, listen, darling. I don't expect you to behave like a gypsy, but let's hire a Hungarian cook and make him a wonderful goulash. Kafka love it. 
I'm going to get that insurance account if I have to stuff that Hungarian like one of his own mattresses. Oh, and uh, to make him feel really at home, our foreign division manager tipped me off. Just before they start to eat, you say, Eggeshegger. <laughs> it means to your health or something like that. Eggeshegger. Mm hmm. Oh, it's just a little thing, but you know how it is. Success in business is 50% hard work and 50% the right cigar. Eggeshegger. That's great, darling. Swell. Only uh, a little more cheerful. You know, Eggeshegger. Eggeshegger. Oh, you mean Eggeshegger. Yeah, that's it, that's it. <laughs> that's great, darling. Thanks. Kicks? Larry. Hmm? Why'd you do that? Do what? Kicks. Well, I always do that. Why? Well, why does one do things? But when you do it, what does it mean? Is there some underlying thought? No, just a habit, isn't it? <laughs> yes, if you want to call it that. Like scratching your head or patting your dog. Would you do it to some other woman? <laughs> I don't know. I never tried. But you do it to me. Well, you're my wife. And that gives you the right to poke me in the stomach whenever you want to. Darling, don't you feel well? Fine. Larry, please don't keeks me anymore. That was not the dog, that was me. Dr. Bengard will be a little delayed. I hope you don't mind. they ugly? Who? People. Is there anything uglier than the human face? Ah. You mind if I smoke? Not at all. Smoke yourself? Yes. You uh, haven't got a cigarette, eh? Yes. any without tips. Unfortunately not. I'm sorry. Fui. Tip. 
Change my mind, I'll have a cigarette. Yes, thank you. Have you uh, seen this doctor before? Yes. Mm. How much did he charge? I really don't know. I haven't asked. Oh, you didn't have to. Dr. Vanguard just phoned. He'll be detained at least another half hour. Another half hour? Well, we have two alternatives. We can read a magazine or we can talk. This is a lovely day, isn't it? Yes. Yes, well, that takes care of that. Let's forget it. Do I bore you? Oh, no, on the contrary. Let me warn you that I say what I think. I'm a complete individualist. Oh, really? I'm against communism, capitalism, fascism, Nazism. I'm against everything and everybody. I hate my fellow man and he hates me. That sounds rather amusing. So I amuse you. I'm a clown, eh? Pagliacci. Oh, no, I didn't say that. All right, don't apologize. Is uh, Vengard a good doctor? I'm sure he'll do you a lot of good. Why do you say that? What's wrong with me? I really wouldn't know. After all, I'm not the psychoanalyst. Uh -huh. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Why are you here? You don't go to a psychoanalyst to have a tooth filled. So what's wrong? I think we'd better read magazines. All right. I hate to bother you again, but uh, what does one have to do to be happy? I think Dr. Vengard would know more about that than I. More than you, Mrs. Baker? Oh, that article. You know, Mrs. Baker, this is the first time in my life I've ever met a really happy person. It seems to irritate you. No, no, it makes me curious. I've often wondered what it would be like to be happy 24 hours a day. It must be wonderful. One gets used to it. Uh -huh. In the morning, you are wakened by the twitter of a little bird. Before breakfast, you and Mr. Baker dance a minuet. Then the happy breakfast starts. You are happy. Mr. Baker is happy. The eggs are happy. The hens who laid the eggs are happy. Now, look here. My presence seems to annoy you, so I think I'll leave. No, I'm sorry, Mrs. Baker, but if you feel that way, naturally, it is I who'll go. Oh, no. I'm afraid you need the doctor more than I. Are you sure, Mrs. Baker? You see, that's an interesting question. We're both here for the same reason, happiness. One has not enough. One has too much. Who needs the doctor more? Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Rather, but I don't like to discuss it. Yes, I understand, Miss Baker. Well, I'm very happy to have met you. I'm very sorry if I've offended you. Goodbye, Miss Baker. Goodbye. Oui. Oh, just a moment. Yes? May I ask you one question? Certainly. Yes? What's wrong with that picture? Are you really interested? Yes. You sit down. Now, this artist saw no more in that tree than the camera which photographed the happy Mrs. Baker. It's only the surface. Art goes much deeper. You see, if I were a painter and I were to paint you, I don't know what the picture would look like. It wouldn't look like that photograph. Do I make sense? Yes. Quite a bit of sense. How do you do? Thank Hello, you. Sebastian. Hello. Oh, by the way, my name is Sebastian. Oh. Alexander Sebastian. Mm -hmm. The name mean anything to you? Be frank? Well, if you insist, no. It's all right, it's all right. Why should it? Let's look at the pictures. Number 15. Child with trumpet. No good. I was afraid it was. The artist hasn't found himself yet. When he does find himself, where is he? Child with trumpet. The child's all right. 
But he's missed very badly on the trumpet. Didn't he? That won't live. I hope not. Fui. That's almost great. Who painted it? A woman. No man could be so malicious. 26. Eleanor Stroud. Portrait of Alexander Sebastian. No use denying it. That's me. That woman didn't paint me. She performed an autopsy. She saw me. Frankly, the whole thing looks to me like a puzzle. Puzzle? That's correct. Good. I was a puzzle to her, but she was no puzzle to me. And that's her revenge. See, when I first saw that picture, I was terribly upset. I don't blame you. What do these notes mean? I'm a musician, a pianist. Oh, a pianist. Oh. And this pedestal here? Well, that, uh, that indicates greatness. Tell me, why didn't you put your statue there? Is there any reason? There is. You see that little line? You mean this line? That's my whole trouble. Oh. That line sent me to Dr. Vengard. Well, you might as well know that I, I'm inhibited artistically. Let's have a drink. Oh, just a moment, just a moment. Yes. What about this clock? A clock? Yes. Oh, that never should have been there. Why? Well, I, that's a personal matter. Are you sorry that you came here? Oh, no, no, on the contrary. It's all so fascinating. It's a new world. I can't quite grasp it. Well, whatever you want to know about me, just ask me. Uh, that, uh, that clock shows 12.15. Is it 12.15 by accident, or does it mean something? It means something. Oh. Let's stop talking about myself. Let's talk about something else. When is your next concert? Yes, when? When I overcome it. Overcome what? That little line. Oh, you mean your inhibitions? Yes. You see, when I play... Tell me, uh, mm -hmm. this 12.15, uh, is it noon? Midnight. Any particular midnight? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Coming back to my inhibitions, when I play in a drawing room... Uh, pardon me, uh, was it uh, Eastern Standard Time? Daylight saving. Summer? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, when I play in a drawing room for just one person, the right person, I'll be perfectly frank with you, I don't think there's a greater pianist in the world. But as soon as I get in a concert hall in front of an audience, no, something gets lost. Those faces staring at me. What right have they to come in and stare at me? What right have they to listen to me just because I pay two dollars? In some cases, two fifty. Why do I bother you with all this? Oh, but I'm glad you did. It's fascinating. You are a puzzle, Mr. Alexander Sebastian. And don't you try to solve me, Mrs. Happy Baker. Come on. Mrs. Kopka, Mr. Janusek, Mrs. Yarishi, Mr. Jones. Jones? How does a foreigner like that get in here tonight? He's Mr. Baker's lawyer. Oh. Well, I suppose you always have to have a lawyer with Hungarians. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How's the goulash coming? Fine, Mr. Baker. Uh, did a package arrive for me? Not yet, sir. for a big night? All set. Uh -huh. Remember your word? Eggeshegera. Eggeshegera. That's it. Good. What is it? Your package had arrived, sir. Albert didn't tell me. Oh, fine.
ask what you're doing here? Waiting. Oh, you're waiting. Tell me, how soon do we have dinner? Dinner? That's what I was invited for. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me, are you with Universal Mattress or United Furniture? I'm not with anything. Oh, oh playing both sides, huh? Well, it's not such a bad idea. <laughs> Say, tell me, how do you feel about Mr. Kafka? Indifferent. Uh, well, I can tell you, nobody's going to put anything over on him. He's pretty smart. I think it's very clever that they've merged. <laughs> Merge your will out, won't it? <laughs> yeah. Look, you want me to enjoy this evening, don't you? Why, yes, certainly. All right, come here. This vase insults me. It's ugly. Let's put it away. <laughs> oh, sure, of course. The customer's always right. Anything else in the room you'd like to change? Lots. <laughs> Well, I think we're going to have a very enjoyable evening. I'll let you in a little secret. We've got goulash. Goulash? Yeah, goulash. Scrambled eggs for me. Well, only a suggestion. Um, will you forgive me? I, I must dress. Uh, just continue to make yourself at home. These Hungarians are certainly funny people. Have they come? One of them has. Look, dear, aren't we dressing? Why? Well, he isn't. Oh, that's Mr. Sebastian. Sebastian? Who's he with? With? He's against everything. He's an individualist. Is he that rich? Oh, he doesn't care anything about... How do you know? Dear, it's Sebastian. Alexander Sebastian. I told you the other day, but that's the trouble. You never listen to anything I say. Makes no impression. Oh, I remember now, that piano player. He's not a piano player. He's a pianist. And pretty soon he'll be very important. Someday you may be very happy to insure his hands for $100,000. Look, darling, I'm giving this dinner especially for these Hungarians. Could he pay a premium? I don't know, and I don't care. You know, sometimes I don't understand you. Here we've got a $500,000 insurance possibility tonight. I've gone to all this trouble to get up a special Hungarian evening for the president of Universal Mattress. And you invite this piano player. You should know better. Musicians and mattresses don't mix. Look, Larry, for six years I've been living insurance, and I'm tired of being an annuity. Can't I just myself spend one evening with Rimsky-Korsakov and Stravinsky? Rimsky-Korsakov? Stravinsky? Who else is coming? Why didn't you invite the whole Philharmonic and have them bring Dean Saylor along as commentator? Oh, all right, all right. Let's drop the whole thing. If you don't want him to play, he won't play. Play? Say, that's not a bad idea. Maybe he could liven up the party, huh? If Mr. Sebastian consents to play, which I doubt, but if he does consent, it won't be Hungarian swing. Well, what will it be? Something you'd have to pay two and a half dollars to hear. You mean, you mean like Carnegie Hall? Exactly. Not in my house, not tonight. What's this? Oh, that's a um, reproduction of a painting I saw in an art gallery. Do you like that? Love it. Well, what is it? Can't you see? Now listen, quit kidding me. What is it? It's a portrait. A portrait? Of what? Of a man. Listen, I know I'm just a poor ignorant insurance dope, and I don't know anything about Stravinsky. But we've been married for six years, and I think I've made you a pretty good husband. When I ask you a question, you still ought to do me the courtesy of answering. You don't have to make fun of me. You know what this is? The Grand Canyon. And that's why, Mr. Kafka, we're the only company for you. Sounds very reasonable. Let's talk about it after dinner. Yes, indeed. After dinner, we'll have a good long talk right here, Mr. Kafka. All right. Mrs. Baker? Thank you, Mrs. Kafka. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you mean not even Lohengrin? Especially not Lohengrin. I give you all of Wagner, except one passage in Tristan. That's really good, but you never hear it played right. 
Perhaps someday I could hear you play it as it should be played. Perhaps. I don't eat strawberries. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Everything all right, Mr. Kafka? Mm-hmm, fine. Thank you, Shaker. Eggy Shagera. Eggy Shagera. Milyen jól mondta ki? Van a tátak, azt mondta, hogy egészségére. Egészen jól mondta magyarul. I thank you so much, Mrs. Baker. You make one feel at home. That's what I call hospitality, Mr. Baker. <laughs> I didn't know she knew it. I wonder where she picked that up. What does it mean? To your health. Oh, isn't that nice? And she pronounced it so well. Ignat. Igen, szíven. Ugye, milyen jól mondta ki magyarul? Igen, nagyon jól. 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 Nagyon I studied music in Budapest. Budapest, yeah, Budapest. Oh. I lived at, uh, what's the name of the street? Andorusia. Andrashi. 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 You know, Dr. Andrashi, you don't need someone. It's a need. 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 It's a I just got a call. Kafka's launching with the Hudson Insurance people tomorrow. It's tonight or never. What about the legal angle? My office is working over time drawing up the contract. All right, I'll go right after them. <laughs> well, enjoy the goulash, Mr. Kafka. Good goulash. Very good goulash. <laughs> if your firm is as good as your cook, we might get together. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought that up. Now, here are the details. Uh, Yaroshin, yes, sir, Laszlo, uh, yes, come sir, here a minute. After all, we are partners. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to listen to Mr. Baker's proposition. Well, gentlemen, here it is in a nutshell. Everybody, please, I have a treat for you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sebastian, you know, is a very well-known pianist, and he's kindly consented to play for us. So if you'll all be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does he have to play? Don't worry. Mrs. Baker. Yes, Mr. Sebastian. Yes. Yes. Good on, Chair. It's locked. That's odd. It's a key. It's too slippery. Who could have locked the piano? Where's the key? I don't know. It's a funny idea. Why should anybody lock the piano? It's too ridiculous. Why should anyone lock the piano? It's a key. Uh, as I was saying, Mr. Kafka, my proposition is a very simple one, but a very sound one. I broke it. Don't you worry. I won't. Now, Mr. Sebastian, please tell us. What are you going to play? Well, first I'm going to play... Mrs. Baker. Yes, Mr. Sebastian. All right. I shall begin with a sonata pathetique by Beethoven, a sonata in three movements. And afterwards, if I feel like it, I shall play half 11 variations on the second theme of the first movement, followed 
for my own variation on Hoff's 11 variations on the second theme of the first movement. Listen, how long is the sonata? The only one I ever heard lasted three cigars. It's a catastrophe. It's a disaster. Jones, were sunk. No, Jones, I'm glad you got that clause in the contract. It saved our necks. Another... Wait a minute, I'm gonna have some fun. Well, how do you do? How do you do, sir? About that picture in the window. It's very good, don't you think? No fooling. What is it? It's a portrait of a man. Oh. Well, certainly. What else could it be? Excuse me, sir. Not everybody understands modern art. Well, thanks. If you're interested, it's only $500. $500? Must be quite a man. Well, it's not the man. He happens to be rather an obscure musician. Musician? What kind of a musician? A pianist, I think. Is it by any chance Alexander Sebastian? Well, that's who it is. You recognized him. He seems to be a friend of yours. Wouldn't it be amusing to have him in your home permanently? Not very amusing. Cheap guy like that. Who? Him. Goodbye, Jones. me a little music, do you? Oh, no, no. Anything new? Well, this, isn't it enough? Yeah, plenty. Have a good day? Fine. You seem to be feeling better these days. Oh, yes. I slept ten hours last night. And, Larry, the hiccups have completely disappeared. Isn't that good news? Yeah, very good news. Are you uh, still going to Dr. Vengard? Oh, no. I don't need Dr. Vengard anymore. I'm so busy with my music and visiting art galleries that I haven't even time to think of any doctor. Oh, isn't that wonderful? You know, I, I'm beginning to see something in this. 
Yeah, it starts to look like a man. Huh? Why did you say that? Well, the other night. Oh, you took that seriously. I was only kidding. How could that be a man? I was nervous about the dinner party, and I said whatever came into my mind. I'm sorry, darling. No, dear, no, I don't agree with you. It does look like a man. Now, don't be stubborn. Can't you take a joke? Well, then, what is it? It's, uh, it's a meadow. It's called Meadow in Spring. Oh, oh, in spring, huh? <laughs> yeah. Mm. And, uh, those little notes of music, what do they mean? Oh, that's, uh, that's the shepherd playing his pipe. Shepherds play pipes, don't they? Oh, oh, oh sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the clock at 12.15? Oh, I, I don't know exactly what that means, but... But I guess it's probably lunch. The shepherd eats and then he plays his pipe. Mm. Really, darling, you talk as though you've never been in a meadow. You see, in modern art, they're trying to break down the conventional forms. They're trying to get away from what you expect. It's all done by indication. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just putting a mustache on the shepherd. Knock that guy right through his piano. Now, that'd be the worst thing you could do. You'd just make her feel sorry for him. Don't make a martyr of him. You've got to look at this thing from a woman's angle. Now, wait a minute. Miss Aiken, will you come in, please? Miss Aikens, we want a woman's point of view on a certain situation. Now, uh, Mr. Baker has a friend, and he's in trouble. Who, Mr. Baker? No, the friend. Oh, Mr. Baker. Oh, sh 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 now, Mr. Baker has nothing whatever to do with it. Let's call the friend Mr. Uh, Mr. Brown. Now, Mr. Brown has a wife. Mrs. Brown. Exactly. Mr. and Mrs. Brown have been married for uh, how long? Well, I'll say six years. Yeah. They live in Toledo. Six years in Toledo? That's bad. All right, then. Let's say New York. Now, Mr. Brown is worried about his marriage. Things are not going along as well as they used to. What kind of a man is this, Mr. Brown? Very nice. Um, wouldn't you say so? Yes, very nice. Is he attractive? Very attractive. Don't you think so? Yes. And yet she's complaining. Well, she's drifting away from him. Yes, and he wants to get things back on the old basis. Who doesn't? Yes. <clears throat> now, Miss Higgins, uh, as a woman, I'm asking you, what is the right approach? Well... I should say a mink coat would do the trick. She has a mink coat. Then what's she complaining about? Thank you, Miss Higgins. That's all. Well, gentlemen, you wanted to get a woman's point of view. Just a moment. Now, look here. Mrs. Brown is interested in another man. Oh. Does Mr. Brown know? Yes. Has he any proof? Too much. Has he any witnesses? No. Then he's sunk. Thank you, Miss Aiken. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Mr. Baker, but if there aren't any witnesses, she's going to deny it, if you want the woman's angle. Miss Aiken, we're thoroughly satisfied. Well, I'm afraid I'm not the right person to give you any advice. I probably have too much sympathy for Mr. Brown and not enough patience with Mrs. Brown. We get cases like that every day. The wife is bored, marriage is just a habit, but on the other hand, she accepts everything her husband gives her. I think she ought to be kicked out. Do I sound old-fashioned? Uh, we'll let you know, Miss Aikens. Well, anyway, I think Mr. Brown is a pretty swell guy. I've always thought so. Some woman. Yeah. She certainly had a couple of interesting angles. I didn't notice them. Good. Now, Larry, you still love your wife, don't you? Yeah. Well, where are you going from here? I have a dinner appointment with old C.K. Higgins at his club. How can I sell insurance with this in my mind? It's a big deal, too. Now, listen. Forget Higgins. Forget insurance. Go home. There's only one thing you have to sell, yourself. The most important client you ever had in your life is waiting for you. And her name is Mrs. Baker. Now, you're the best salesman in the business. There's nothing wrong with your marriage. You just have to resell it once in a while. Not so easy. Well, who said it was? Was it easy to sell hail insurance in Southern California? Just find the right slant, a new one. Selling marriage with a new slant, yeah. huh? A new slant. A bad idea. But what is that new slant? That's what I'd like to know. What is it? What is it? What is it? Selling marriage with a new slant.
Nice surprise, eh? <laughs> Hello, my genius. <laughs> Who are you going to be this evening? Come, tell your little cadenza. Are you Mozart, playful, tender? Or are you the thundering Beethoven, strong, fiery, unyielding? Come, darling, tell your little cadenza. <gasps> Da, da, guess who is here? Guess who is here? Guess who is here? It is Wilton, the god of gods, coming down to it. Anything serious? No, she just fainted. Oh, well, women are always fainting. Any particular reason? No, no. She just thought I was a genius. Then she found out I wasn't, and it was too much for her. Please make yourself at home. I'll be right back. I want to get some smelling salts. Now look, Vicar, let's get this straight. There's going to be a very heated discussion. We're going to insult each other. It can't be avoided. You're going to accuse me of something which I'm going to deny and you're not going to believe. So before this battle starts, let's get one thing straight. I'm not going to fight. My hands are my only livelihood and I'm not going to risk them on your jaw. Here, Mozart, wake up your little cadenza. What's happened? Well, I... I... You! Mm. <laughs> but, oh, that's very funny. You know what I thought? <laughs> look, I think I... <gasps> what? Jones. I'm still selling. You were right. It needed an entirely new slant. I think I've got a new one. Baker, I don't trust you. Oh, come on, have a cigar. Either you have something in the back of your mind or that cigar stinks. No, no, that's the same cigar I give my customers. How old are you, Sebastian? Not as old as you. Mm, right in the prime of life, huh? You in good health? Good enough, even better after I've had dinner. Uh -huh. But I'm not going to fight. No, 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 I don't want to fight. But you might run into a husband sometime who hasn't my respect for great music. Where would you be then? Come on, Sebastian. I'm going to do something for you, whether you like it or not. I'm going to insure your hands. That'll give you complete freedom of action. It'll give me 5%. And we'll both be happy. I'm not going to fight. No, I know. I understand. You're an isolationist. Isolate yourself over there. You know, the best part of this whole thing is that we... Sit down. We can write this hand insurance as a subclause to your life insurance. Life insurance? What do I want with life insurance? I'm Jenny Dependents. Any relatives? Relatives? Fui. I'll tell you. You can leave it to my wife. She can buy herself a beautiful brooch in the shape of a piano with little diamond keys. And then every time she pins it on, she'll think of poor dear Sebastian. Believe me, if anybody should insure his life, it's you. And right now,
Now then, where were you born? I'm not going to fight. So you love my wife, don't you? Love your wife, Big. Oh, so that's what you've been driving at. Oh, now I understand the whole thing. Oh, really, Baker, you should be a little ashamed of yourself. Great big insurance man like you, deal so successfully with, with human nature? Why, you, you should know better than that. Naturally, I think your wife's very attractive and very charming. She likes music. What's that thing loaded? Yeah. Oh, now look, Baker, get it out of your mind. I don't love your wife. Well, it's going to be a great day in the musical heaven. I can just see Beethoven calling over to Mozart. Hey, Mozart, dust off the piano. Look who's coming, the little genius. That's not funny. Now, this isn't funny either. I love my wife. I've loved her for six years. For six years, we've been together. And along comes a guy like you and breaks everything up just because you've nothing else to do. You're not going to get away with it. Well, if you'd loved my wife earnestly and sincerely, and you'd come to me and told me about it, well, that would have been one of those things. I'm not old-fashioned. You both felt that you would have been happier without me. What can I have done? Pack my suitcase. I wouldn't have to do this. <laughs> oh, you know, Baker, you kind of had me worried there for a minute. When you pulled out that revolver, I thought, he is a conventional citizen. No sense telling the truth to a man like that. But now I see the real Baker, modern, up to date. Baker, I'm going to open up to you. Of course I love your wife. You're sure? Positive. Well, then I won't have to shoot you. I don't think it'll be necessary. Well, we've got a clean-cut situation on our hands. You love my wife, and my wife loves you. Well... Oh, yes, she does. I've seen it with my own eyes. Well, there's only one thing left for me to do. Hmm? Jonesy, I'm still selling. Did I hit back? No. Good. Shouldn't have done that, Baker. I know, and I'm sorry. Shouldn't have done it. I slipped back into the old-fashioned Baker. I probably won't do it again. I'm not going to fight. Hello. This is Lawrence Baker. I want to reserve a room for tonight. I'll be right over. Thanks. Baker. Are you really moving out? Well, yes, certainly. I think I should leave the apartment to her. You do? Well, yes, it's only fair, don't you think so? Yes, I think that seems to be the best approach. Well, I'm glad you think so. No, no, I don't want there to be any bitterness. No, fortunately, I'm in a position to give her security, to take care of her future. And why not? She deserves it, don't you think so? Hmm? Yes, yes. Yes, I do. After all, she's given me the best years of her life. Yes, I'll take some wonderful memories with me. She's a nice girl, isn't she? Hmm? Yes, yes, very nice. Of course, she has her faults. Well, who hasn't? That's true, that's true. Uh, it's of a Sebastian, if uh, hmm? you should ever run into one of her bad moods, all you have to do is... <laughs> oh, no, perhaps I'd better not tell you. Come on, now, don't act like a little boy. What is it? Oh, well, it's kind of personal. Why? Come on, come on, what is it? <laughs> well, if you ever should run into one of her bad moods, yes. and you want to snap her right uh -huh. out of it. There's only one way to do it. What's that? Just keeks her. Keeks her? How do you do that? Just keeks <laughs> She liked that? Insane about it. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> Keeks? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now, about the cause for divorce. According to New York state law, one of the parties must have a correspondent. Oh, there must be some less embarrassing way. Not in New York. Well, you don't have to do it. I'll get the correspondent. Oh, no. I wouldn't like to put you in that position. Oh, well, that's all right. But why should you take the blame? Oh, it's okay. It's quick and painless. Very white of you, Baker. Thanks, Sebastian. That leaves the property settlement. The following agreement has been reached between Lawrence Baker, here and after referred to as a party of the first part, and Jill Baker, here and after referred to as the party of the second part. 
It is understood that the party of the first part transfers title to the apartment at 685 Park Avenue to the party of the second part. Well, what about the furnishings? Yes, what about them? Well, I didn't understand that oh, you Oh, yes, I want everything transferred to... Uh, to the party of the second part. Can't we take that up later? No, let's get everything settled now. You're entitled to it. Oh, now look. Now, he's only trying to be fair. You're too generous. No, just fair. That's all. Well, if there's anything you want... Oh, I don't need anything. What would I do with it? But Larry... Well, he lives in a hotel. Where would he put it? He'd only have to pay storage. That's right. Well, I'd better change this. What's his name? Jones. I don't trust him. Well, here we are. Mm-hmm. Baker versus Baker. Sounds awful, doesn't it? Everything legal does. Oh, about this correspondent. Yes? Who is it going to be? Oh, I don't know. Anyone in mind? Mm -hmm. I have several promising prospects. Oh, you have? Mm-hmm. Yes, I think we can clear up the whole matter in about four weeks. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Uh-huh. Tell me, it isn't Mary Logan. Mary Logan is a correspondent? Oh, I think I can do better than that. After everything's straightened out, I think I'll take a trip to South America. Is it one of my friends? No, you know I never cared very much for your friends. Someone I know? Darling, this is a divorce, not 20 questions. Oh, I'm just curious. Oh, don't worry. You can rely on me. I won't disgrace the family name. Larry, do you really want this divorce? Well, absolutely, don't you? Well... Well, don't tell me you don't want it. That'd be a great disappointment. After all, you're seriously in love with Sebastian. Otherwise, you wouldn't have... Well, we wouldn't be here. You're too fine a person, Jill, to have done all this just to fill out your day. I've always believed that you're sincere. I still do. I'd like to take that memory with me. I'm sorry if I hurt you. You couldn't help it. Don't worry, there'll be no bitterness. Funny, isn't it? For six years, you were my husband. And now, you're the party of the first part. I used to be your Jill. And now I'm here and after referred to, and that's all. Well, everything's taken care of. What's the matter? What'd you do? Nothing, just went over some of the details. I don't trust you, Baker. Darling, there's nothing to worry about. It's a very clean-cut agreement. Alexander, please, I'm so nervous. Can't you understand? Of course, we all have our little moods. Now, let's read this again. The following agreement has is been reached... It's unnecessary, unless we can agree on the correspondent. Well, it's none of your business. Darling, it isn't. Keep quiet. It is my business. You're not going to make me the laughing stock of the whole town with some girl. A girl I don't even know. Oh, no, you're not going to have that triumph, Mr. Baker. Goodbye. <laughs> Kicks? Don't do that, Baker. Jill! 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 And that, my dear Mr. Jones, is what is known as protecting your original investment. Let's get a drink. I think you softened her. Softened her? Destroyed her. She's going to come back and eat out of my hand. And what I'm going to do to Mrs. Jill Baker. Here and after referred to as Jill Lamb Baker. <laughs> if you want to buy a good piano cheap, Jones, you can have it. No. Oh, 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 am I going to be difficult. I'm going to be the mad dog of 685 Park Avenue. Heil Baker. <laughs> Mr. Jones? Yes, Mrs. Baker. About this correspondent, what does the law require? Well, she... Uh... No, in case I have the correspondent. Oh, well, you have to be found alone with him in your apartment, and he with his coat off. I see. Alexander? Yes, darling? Are you willing to take your coat off for me? Anything you say, darling. Oh, no. No, no. Oh, yes. You mean you really want to do that? I do. You want to compromise me with that guy? Ah, yes. you seem to forget, Baker, that she's in love with that guy. Keats! You brute! Alexander! 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 Snoogy! Snoogy? Calling that Snoogy? Come on, darling. There you are. Yeah, You'll be all right. Sit down here. Uh, for six years I've been married to a brute and I didn't know it. A divorce, yes, that's the only solution. All right. 
Why don't you go to Reno? Yes, Reno. I don't want to go west. Oh, darling, how are you? Unshaken. Would you establish residence in Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania? That's around Philadelphia, isn't it? In the neighborhood, yes. yes. Well, that's not bad. They've got a good orchestra. It'd be easy to communicate with New York. Very well. Shall we say Pennsylvania? All right, Pennsylvania, China, anywhere. Only let's get it over with. Okay, let's look up Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, Pen ah, there. That's... Snoogy. You're going to get your divorce if it's the last thing I do. Section 10. Innocent spouse may get divorce provided the other spouse shall have, by cruel and barbarous treatment, rendered life intolerable and burdensome to said innocent spouse. Sounds promising. Shouldn't be difficult for you to be barbarous. No, my innocent spouse. What do I have to do? Well, let's call in a witness. Let's say, uh, my secretary. And first, you two start a quarrel. With pleasure. And then I'd say, maybe you slap her face. Slap her face? Oh, no. So, you can hit a man, but you don't dare strike a woman. You coward, you. All right, I'll do it. Very well. Now, let's rehearse the whole thing. Now, here's the plan. Miss Higgins, will you come in, please? Right away, Mr. Jones. Now, remember, I start to dictate a letter. As soon as I snap my fingers, you start the argument. And when you say... You cheap second-rate insurance peddler. When I hit you. Now, Baker, don't let it stop. Miss Higgins! Miss Higgins! Coming, Mr. Jones. Sit down, please. Take this. To uh, Walter K. Dovenmule, Capital City Bank and Trust Company, Columbus, Ohio. My dear Mr. Dovenmule, now let me see. So, so you won't tell me? Uh, I, I wasn't there. My mother saw you. Your mother gives me a pain in the neck. How dare you say that about my beloved mother? Your beloved mother. Pooh! So you won't tell me, huh? I wasn't there. But my mother saw you. Your mother gives me a pain in the neck. How dare you say that about my beloved mother? Your beloved mother. Pooh! Who are you to pooh my mother? Your mother. Do you know what your mother reminds me of? Hey, hey, stop, stop! Just a minute. Miss Higgins. I didn't tell you to leave. Yes, for heaven's sakes, Miss Higgins. Sit down. Now, read that back to me. Mr. Walter K. Dovenmule, Capital City Bank and Trust Company, Columbus, Ohio. My dear Mr. Dovenmule. So you don't like my mother? No, I don't like your whole family. Oh, you don't? No, I don't like your father, I don't like your brother. And you know what your mother reminds me of? What? Of you. That'll give you a rough idea of what I think of your mother. You cheap second-rate insurance peddler. You cheap second-rate insurance peddler. What she called you, cheap second-rate insurance bill. Yes! Now look, man, our whole happiness is at stake. One good sock. Here, have another cognac. Now give it everything. Read it back to me. Walter K. Dovenmule, Capital City Bank and Trust Company, Columbus, Ohio. My dear Mr. Dovenmule. Yeah, my dear Mr. Yeah, yeah. Everything I said about your mother still goes. And double. Oh, it does? Yes, it does. Well, I still say you're a cheap second-rate insurance peddler. Oh, so I'm a cheap second-rate insurance peddler, am I? Yes, you are. Say it again. You cheap second-rate insurance peddler. <laughs> Fui. Come on, Baker, pull yourself together. You can do it. Swell guy like you. Read it back to me. Walter K. Dovenmule, Capital City Bank and Trust Company, Columbus, Ohio. My dear, My dear Mr. Mr. Dovenmule. Did you see that, Miss Higgins? A husband slapping his wife? Yes, did you see it? Mrs. Baker, I'm very sorry this happened in my office. So am I. Imagine that, a husband hitting his wife. He had to get drunk to do it. Goodbye, Mr. Jones. Goodbye, Mrs. Baker. What about Walter K. Dovenmule? Tell him I'm out.
Thank you, sir. Come in. Hello, Albert. Good morning, sir. I hope you'll forgive me for disturbing you on Sunday. Oh, it's all right, Albert. Have a late night, sir? Yes, I've had a series of late nights. I guess I'm not as young as I used to be. Oh, I think you look very fit, sir. Oh, thanks, Albert. How's everything going? Well, not so well, sir. I came to ask if in your future plans you'd have any use for me. Have you left Miss Baker? Yes, sir. I had to, on account of that musical gentleman. Oh. In fact, we all left, except Emma. But then she fortunately is quite deaf. How is Miss Baker? As charming as ever, sir. Happy, I suppose. If you'll pardon me for saying so, I think she shows great courage. I understand. Does it disturb you? No, 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 no. I love music. <laughs> yes, I'm going to Philadelphia. And you're happy? Oh, yes, very. Of course, I'm still a little bewildered. It's all so new. Oh, I guess it's all very exciting. Oh, yes, very exciting. Being transferred from the business world into the world of art. Nothing but Bach and Tchaikovsky. That's Bach he's practicing. Oh, yes. You sure it doesn't disturb you? Oh, no, no, no. I love it. You don't have to be ashamed. Not everybody likes Bob, so if you want him to start... My dear, I wouldn't think of it. The whole thing sounds so very romantic. <laughs> yes, very romantic. Oh, by the way, have you seen Larry? Yes, yes, I saw him last night at the Monte Carlo. <laughs> Larry at the Monte Carlo? Yes. <laughs> Imagine. Just a moment. What were we talking about? So, you don't like my music, eh? Well, Alexander... I make nothing but a lot of noise. All right. Fui. <laughs> Isn't he original? Oh, very. I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. I love to make him angry. He turns into a big grizzly bear. It must be fascinating. Yes. Jill? The bear. <laughs> what is it? Jill, there'll be no more music here today. Oh, no? No, and don't coax me. Shh. And don't shush me. As a matter of fact, there'll be no more Sebastian here today. At least not for lunch. And dinner is very uncertain. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. It is. Jill, I can be very impossible. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> what fun. I only hope poor Larry has as good a time as I. Well, when I saw him at the Monte Carlo. Oh, yes. I suppose that was another one of those dull business evenings. Was it a large party? No, I'd say she was about your size. Oh. Was she attractive? No, I didn't think so. But George and Freddie thought she was terrific. You know George and Freddie. But what do you care? That's right. What do I care? Larry's entitled to have a little fun. <laughs> That's the kind of life he likes. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Sally, darling. <laughs> I feel pretty good considering. What about you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. 
Huh? Well, no, I'm sure you took it with you when we left for the Monte Carlo. Wait a minute. Hello? Yes, it is. All right. Goodbye. Hello. Hello. Are you going to throw me out? Jill, you shouldn't come up here. It's rather embarrassing. Well, I was just passing by. But after all, if Sebastian finds out... Oh, don't worry about that. But I do. A girl engaged to be married, coming to a bachelor's apartment, and unannounced. Just a moment. Well. I seem to be intruding. Look, Jill, what do you want to see me about? Someone here? What do you want, Jill? Well, I was driving by and... Oh, right on the 31st floor? Well, you said you wanted some kind of remembrance and I'm on my way to Cynthia Knox's tea and I had to pass by, so I picked up a few things. Some snapshots of us taken together. Mm -hmm. Thought you might be interested. Thank you. Aren't you going to look at them? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the first time we met. There's one of you sitting in my lap, our wedding, our honeymoon. That's very nice, thanks. Anything else? I heard you were at the Monte Carlo last night. Yeah. Mm. Sleepy? Huh? Uh, yes. <clears throat> well, give my regards to Cynthia Knox. Who? You were on your way to Cynthia Knox's tea room. Oh, yes, yes. Mm. I like your apartment, Larry. It's lovely. Charming. Yes, very, very charming. In such good taste. Pretty. So cozy. Lovely curtains. And such a beautiful view. Yes, such a beautiful view. I'm sorry. That was rather foolish. Please forgive me. Oh, Larry, I did make quite a mess of things. Oh, everything turns out for the best. You can't mean that, Larry. I can and I do. Larry. Please don't make me go to Philadelphia. Please don't. Oh, madam has changed her mind. She gets a little tired of marriage and she walks out just like that. What does she care if she makes a fool of her husband? Or how much she hurts him? And then she gets a little tired of piano music and she comes back and says, oh, it was just a little whim of mine, so please trot back to the old homestead. You break up a whole life and then think you can put it back together again in one afternoon. Oh, no, it's not that easy. I didn't expect it to be easy. To tell you what I think of you would take more than just one afternoon. How about dinner? Dinner? Couldn't we just have dinner together tonight? I'm sorry, I'm engaged for dinner. Oh, that girl. Yes, that girl. I don't like your tone. I'm sorry. First you try to mess up my life, now you want to spoil that girl's Sunday. Sally doesn't get every day off, you know. Sally works hard. Oh, she does. Now what's wrong with that? Nothing. She doesn't have everything dumped in her lap like you. She hasn't time to go to crazy art galleries, play around with second-rate musicians, or go to psychoanalysts. She hasn't a husband to pay for her complexes. Sally's a mighty fine girl, much finer than your Mr. Sebastian. She doesn't wear your shirts, either. Did he take... Oh, skip it. Here, you promised to love, honor, and obey. And here. Mm -hmm. That's the first time we met. That's an awful picture of me. But you were a fine girl. I didn't bore you with my insurance then. You listened to everything. You wanted to know everything about me and my work. You wanted to help. Oh, Larry. And here. I remember everything you said to me. I'd love to say it again, Larry, if you'd only give me the chance. Mm. Just to forget it again. No, Larry, never again. I swear. There's no use pretending. I'm defeated. <laughs> Gee. I'll always remember that tree in front of our hotel window. And that funny old Italian waiter? Oh, that wasn't here. Oh, yes. No, no, it wasn't. No, no, here. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that front porch. My first breakfast. Yes. Oh, Larry, couldn't we have dinner together? 
Not tonight. Why not? Sally? Let me talk to her. Oh, no. Woman to woman, she'll understand. No, no. Please, Larry. Well, you don't deserve it, but I'll see what I can do. Thank you, darling. You stay right here. It's going to be very tough. Sally Akins. Akins. That girl. How'd you do, Miss Aiken? Oh, hello, Mrs. Baker. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Baker would have loved to have seen you, but unfortunately, he's busy. Oh, he asked me to give you your handbag. Oh, yes, I forgot it. I, I was doing some secretarial work for Mr. Baker. Oh, secretaries work on Saturday night. Oh, well, uh, I'm a notary public, too. Oh, I see. And you brought your seal? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. A train seal. Mm -hmm. uh, Goodbye, Miss Aiken. Goodbye, Mrs. Baker. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Looks hopeless. Oh. Yeah, it's much more serious than I thought. Oh. That girl's really in love with me. She adores me. I don't blame her. She says she can't live without me. And I believe her. And I too. It's understandable. You're very wonderful. Oh, oh yes, yes, you are. How about dinner? But you know I can't. How about after dinner? Do you want a suicide in your conscience? Oh, no. No, no, not that. Well, there you are. You're right. It's hopeless. It's too bad, Jill. Everything could have been so marvelous. Yes. There's no reason we couldn't really have been happy. Yes, but it's too late now. Yeah. It looks like the end. Goodbye, Larry, and good luck. Good luck. I'll talk to her again. Mrs. Baker home? Yes, ma'am. Never mind. Yes, who is back? It's Bolton, the god of gods, coming back to Earth.
Thank you.